The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the uh, February 26th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift into every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call, 877-927-6648. If you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. Send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger Stem, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on marvelous, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed bag out here. The mix goes like this. You got the Dow off just slightly right now, eight points, S&P down seven. You've got the NASDAQ 100 up 21, Russell's up 11, semis are up 45, trannies are off 65, gold's down nearly 12 bucks, silver's off 48 cents, lights recruit us off a buck. Now it's a gas up 8 cents, the 30 year treasury printed out at uh, 118.28. That's the June contract. That's where we are trading right now. If we take a look at the leaders to the clubhouse to the upside, we start with micro strategy 109 bucks, 15%. Booking holdings, 45 bucks, a little over 1.5% almost. Uh, Crystal Biotech, 40 points, 36 point move there. Alpha Metal Metal Metallurgical Resources, thirty-eight bucks, nearly ten percent. Dominoes, twenty-five buck move, nearly six percent there. To the downside, the Shakers, Insulate Corporation, Pod P O D down ten bucks, five and a half percent. Transmedics Group down seven bucks, eight percent. Teleflex seven bucks, three percent. Align Technology five bucks, nearly two percent. Corona Therapeutics one and a half percent. That's a nearly a five dollar move to the downside. So. Where do we begin our day? I'll tell you where we begin our day. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, daily equity futures and the indices. Let's start there. Let's go take a look at, we're going to change panels here. We're going to go over to the white background charts for Stevie. And now we've got the daily equity future contracts. Upper left-hand side, we've got the ES Mini. What do we know about it? The ES Mini is trading above all resistance. When I say all resistance, it's trading above that green oscillator and change line and above the top of its daily profile. As long as that condition remains, conditions are bullish. There is a road momentum indicator signal that is triggered. If we do see a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm at least some type of short-term top out there. Um, short of that, uh, price uh, looks like it wants to rally. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ does not have a topping pattern the nq is trained above the top of its daily profile that is support old resistance is being tested as support that level by the way is 17924 it also has a road momentum indicator signal but that needs a new bearish reversal candle to confirm a top we'll keep our eyes on that the dow equity future contract really same market conditions as the es mini price trade above profile price is trading above its green asset and change line those conditions are certainly bullish if there were to be a bearish reversal candle that would confirm for us a short-term top Lastly, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, Russell 2000 right now is trying to get above that green oscillator and change line. The number, so at day's end, the number to watch is 2026. Price closes above that. It signals to you and I that we should see a further rally. And that rally should take us up towards the level of about 2060 or so. That would be a descending trend line, a descending trend line that you would draw coming off of the high out here. 
from December 27th, and I'd use the high from uh, February the 15th out there. That'll give you a trend line where price is likely to go target if, in fact, we get a close by that green oscillator and change line. So that's what the four equity future contracts are communicating to us for their daily time frame. How about the cash indices? Great question. Why don't we go figure that out? For that, we're going to take a look at those charts. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you got the Dow Jones Cash Index. What we see out here, price above a green oscillator and change line, a bullish condition. What we have is a Rosemontum indicator signal that is present. If we were to get a bearish reversal candle, for example, if now was 4 p.m., that would show up as a bearish shooting star candle. That would confirm a Rosemontum indicator top. The signal in this instance would be neutral because price above that green oscillator and change line. In the case of the S&P 500, if we get a, if we do not take out Friday's high, this will generate a wave number seven top. Let's pull this back out here. Let's open it up, pull it back just a tad. We can see that we had a wave seven top out here on the trading day. It didn't last for very long. The last time we had a wave seven top inside the S&P 500, that confirmed on December 14th. That lasted for about a day and a half out there. Well, we have another one. Uh, again, that requires a lower high in order to confirm that pattern. It's also Rhodes Mentum indicator signal triggered. But if we did see a close below that green oscillator and change on a 5074, that would certainly confirm that seventh wave top signal and suggest a further retracement. That's the S&P 500. In the case of the Dow, a similar setup, just like the ES Mini was a similar setup to the uh, YM. The, oh, this is the NDX 100 I've got out here. I thought it was going to the Dow. Uh, let's take a look at the NDX 100. In the case of the NDX 100, we've got a what looks like could be a confirmed roadsman, uh, not a, I'm sorry, a confirmed seventh wave move uh, top out there. Price is going to have to rally and take out Friday's high in order to negate that signal. At the moment, the reason why I hesitated a little bit there is price is below that green oscillator and change line. As long as that condition remains, we're likely to see a further retracement. Now, if we get a close above that green oscillator and change line, mm, we would have really kind of a neutral type signal out there because that would be bullish wave number seven top would be somewhat uh, short term bearish. If we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000. Not really a ton for me to report on here other than like the equity future contract that was trying to trade above its green oscillator and change line. It was trading above it. Will it close above it? And that number here for the cash index is going to be a 2023-20. A close above that is going to suggest a further rally. The semis on Friday generated a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now, we're having a nice rally. They're leading the charge uh, to the upside. We, didn't we did not see a close below that green oscillator and change line on Friday. So, yes, we have a topping pattern inside of the semiconductor index. However, as long as price remains above that green oscillator and change line, currently printed at 46.27 and a little bit of change out there, as long as price remains above that, its overall signal is neutral. Now, a close above Friday's high, that number is 47.09.52, would negate that Rhodes Mintum indicator pattern out there. So you do have a top inside of the semis. Inside of the transports, they still have a top. That's a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The NASDAQ composite, much like the NASDAQ 100, wave number seven, Price right now is trading above that green oscillator and change line by a smidgen. And the New York Stock Exchange, it has a wave number seven pattern that needs a lower high. That's not going to come today because we have taken out Friday's high. It does have a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal present. And that requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top out there. So we've got some potential for some short-term tops forming this week out here inside the cash indices. Let's see what the market actually does. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. I uh, had the pleasure of catching Spyro Gyra on Friday night. They were playing down here Friday and uh, Saturday. Now, they normally just tour by themselves. They, uh, Jay Beckenstein is in his 70s. He starts at 7.30. He's done by 9 o'clock at the latest usually. But this uh, is 50 years. This is their 50-year anniversary. And uh, so they, uh, for whatever reason, at least at least in the early uh, shows of the concert, they have uh, uh, Jeff Lorber. Uh, uh, playing with them. So I, I bought Jeff Lorber's first uh, album. What really was an album? I burned holes in the uh, cassette um, back in the uh, back in the um, late 70s, uh, for sure out there. And he's, he, I have not seen him perform. Uh, this is the first time I've, I've seen him on a tour. So it was really cool. Now, what I didn't know, I didn't know if Jeff Lorber was going to be playing with Spyro Gyra or they, he brought the uh, whatever band he was touring with. And it turned out he brought the band. I called the called the venue and they said, no, I think we're they think he's playing uh, with them. So I said, OK, we've got to make sure we're down there by 730. Anyways, he was touring with two other guys. Now, what was really cool is uh, one of my one of my favorite uh, bands. I've got many of them. A band called uh, the Yellow Jackets. Maybe some of you have, have heard of them. Great jazz band. There's an amazing sound that comes from that uh, band, or at least it did in the uh, in the past. And it's a, it's an electric bass guitar. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, guys play that, uh, but it's really a cool instrument. Very cool instrument, in my opinion. Um, and just such great sound. Well, turns out they had Jimmy. Hayslip. So Jeff Lorber was touring with Jimmy Hayslip, and, and I don't remember the drummer's name. I gotta find it. He was one of the most amazing drummers I've seen out here. But Jimmy Hayslip, he is one of the co-founders of uh, of the Yellow Jackets, which I never saw in concert either. Um, so it was just so cool. We walked into the venue. We actually walked in uh, during the first song, and I heard all I heard was was the bass was this bass guitar, and I'm like, I know that. So you know, there's a certain Certain musicians can play an instrument 
and they just have a unique sound. Even the drums, uh, you can pick out sometimes who is uh, who is playing. Anyway, the point that I'm going to make here is really stalling because I needed some charts uh, that, uh, to get to. But really, if if he is playing in your area and if he's touring with Jeff Lorber, actually, what was really cool about this concert is he was as just kind of a normal set out there. He, he played he played till like 10:30. Uh, in the evening, between the between the two shows, at least out there, and he played a lot of a lot of great tunes. It was really, really, um, really good concert. Anyway, let's get to some of the requests that have come in already. I'll get there. Don't worry about it. Oh, cool, Z and uh, Mr. Bill, very cool. Um, so I had some requests that came in, or a request that came in for a number of instruments over the weekend. This is from Kevin S. And some of these things are interest, are things that we had taken a look at. Uh, for example, soybeans. We talked about this maybe a week or two ago. So I wanted me to take a look at soybeans, once understand the seasonals, things of that sort. So we do take a look at soybeans out here. What I've done is I pulled up the uh, soybean contract. What the heck is going on here? That's weird. Um, and uh, uh, so I've uh, SOYB. Uh, versus, and including inside that is the three equity future the three equity the three soybean future contracts that make up SOIB. It's about a third each. It's not exactly a third, but it's close. May, July, and November are those three contracts that make that up. On Friday, what you got out here was a uh, yes. He did. Yakos Pistorius is playing now with the uh, Yellow Jackets. That's what Jimmy had mentioned out there. He he since left the band. I think he left said 2012, 13, 14, something like that. And uh, so uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty cool and he, and he he was he's you know he's like please go see them you know he's a real big supporter of um of pastorius's son who, which i guess is really <laughs> the apple doesn't fall far from the tree you know another great uh, um uh, bass player out there in any event so if we take a look at soybeans on friday they generated a, a td9 count bottom pattern out there and what that says out here to us kevin is if we see a close below that low that low is 1138.25 it negates that signal and you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a pattern reason to be long soybeans at that stage in the july contract both the july november May each of them form TD9 counts, but I'll give you the numbers to pay attention to at today's close. So, for example, on the July contract out here, you're looking at a close below 1148.25 negates that signal. Now, there's still roadsment indicator patterns that are present. Uh, Kevin, that requires a bullish reversal candidate to confirm that bottom pattern out there. And finally, on the November contract for beans out here, they're trading right now below that TD9 count bottom, and a close today below 1128.25 would negate that signal and say, get out of Dodge. Now, I'm currently in that trade, maybe out of that trade by uh, day's end. And the reason I got in that trade is one, because of a bottom. Two, what do we have up here? Seasonal trend for soybeans over 33 years. So we're it's still in somewhat of a favorable seasonal pattern. So the favorable pattern typically starts around the um, January 30th. And really what it does is it typically runs, this is now over the last 33 years, through the middle of June out there. So when you get a bottom pattern and you get a seasonal pattern that align with each other, to me, that's a, a worthwhile uh, trade. But that's not working out. And you get a close, and regardless of the seasonal pattern, Right. Uh, because we don't know whether something is going to follow along the typical average analog or not. But when you do know you're in a favorable seasonal cycle and you do get a nice bottoming signal, which we did have or do have inside of soybeans, the question is, will it hold or not? And I don't have the answer to that one. But, Kevin, that is uh, soybeans. That's what I would be watching there. You also had a request to take a look at wheat as opposed to just looking at the wheat contracts. Let's go take a look at the wheat contracts that make up W.E.A.T. This way people can trade uh, the ETF. They're not trading the futures or what have you. And here, now, the May contract for wheat is the active contract as we speak. The contracts that are included inside WEAT are May, July, and December. We take a look at that uh, May contract for wheat. I do see a buy the D point pattern that was formed out here with this bullish engulfing candle back on February 20th. What we can see is that uh, what price did was it rallied right into where a counter trend move would end. So that's not really a great scene for uh, wheat, at least for its May contract. Now, what do you mean rallied into the area where a counter trend rally would end? So that's a great question. And the answer to that comes from using our market profiles. We have a bullish structured market profile, which we did, or which we do still right now inside of the May contract. And how that's established is the top line is where sellers are at. The bottom line is buyers. The center line is where both buyers and sellers are. 
And if we have that line closer to where the sellers are, that's why it's a bullish structure, or buyers are, that's why it's a bullish structure profile. Now, when you close below profile, a bullish structure profile, that really gives you a signal of a, a profile change in trend. And any rallies, if it's only a counter trend move, will typically find resistance at that center line. That is exactly what happened here on the May contract for wheat two days ago. Now, it doesn't mean that it's over and it is curtains. Right now, this is signaling to an eye because we are below profile and a red oscillator and change line, and we're with inside that swing point that generated that by the D point that perhaps price is going to get down and test that February 20th low. That is the exact same signal coming from the July contract out there. And there's also the exact same signal coming from the uh, December contract. When I do take a look at the December contract and the July contract, those two also formed TD nine count bottoms. But nonetheless, on the rallies, price stalled at those profiles. In the case of the December contract, it was at the bottom. So what do you do here? Well, that's up to you. You do have those bottom signals. You'd really probably go down and take a look at more of an intraday type of a uh, chart out there uh, for some type of signal. But that's what's going on with regard to wheat. You had asked about the seasonal pattern. So let's open up that chart, see if I get to that before the break. If not, we'll certainly get to that when we come back from this break. Here we go. We got wheat. We got about 20 seconds. Let's get this up. We've got 33 years worth of wheat. So here's your seasonal cycles for wheat. And basically, it starts to enter the unfavorable seasonal cycle right around next week, March the 4th. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back. We're going to take a look at live cattle. The Dow is seasonal cattle. The Berkshire Hathaway, PNVX, and Amazon. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, uh, folks. Let's continue with our request out here. Uh, this uh, next one also coming in from Kevin. He wanted to take a look at the live cattle. Those are the charts that we've got up on the screen. Let's take a quick peek, though, at the uh, seasonal pattern. Now, this goes back uh, 44 years. What we can see out here, uh, Kevin, is as we speak right now, live cattle should be topping based upon its seasonal pattern. It enters the unfavorable seasonal pattern about now, and that lasts through the early part of June out there. So we know we've got those seasonal patterns. Let's go take a look at the charts are communicating. And I'll just simply take a look at the daily time frame chart first. The daily time frame chart confirmed a roads momentum indicator top, and that was back a couple of days ago. So that is certainly lining up with that uh, seasonal pattern out here. Now, price is trading with inside its profile. So this is going to need a profile change in trend to tell you that this topping pattern is going to take hold. That would require a close below 184.10. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, a TD9 count top is going to complete this week. Bar number nine completed last week. That says that price should pull back to the 182.81-ish area. That is its oscillator unchanged line. Now let's go to the intraday charts. Five-hour time frame chart, much like the daily erodes meant to indicator top, price consolidating with inside its profiles. On the four-hour time frame chart, just a consolidation with inside of profile. Two-hour chart, a consolidation with inside of profile. The same on the 60-minute. The 30-minute time frame chart, um, we've got a TD9 count top that price is trading into. So on an intraday basis out here, if price is able to close above, give me a moment, I can give you that figure. Uh, this is the April contract we're looking at. If price is able to close above on a 30-minute basis, 188.30, that's going to tell you about a further rally. Now, that further rally likely gets up towards the top of that daily profile, the 188.56 level. But what I can share with you is that on the daily basis and the weekly time frame right now, uh, you have the topping patterns that line up with the seasonals over a 44-year period of time for live cattle that suggests that we head lower into the summertime. Now, you'd also asked about the uh, Dow. And so the Dow, the interesting thing about the Dow, I'm going to go ahead and switch screens out here. I'm going to switch screens. That way we can actually take a look at my Dow chart with the, change windows, with the horizontal trading ranges on that. So let's get over to this set of charts out here. And let me actually find that PTR Dow. Before we go to those charts, let's take a look at the seasonal patterns associated with the Dow. And uh, let's pull those up here. And we're going to take a look at the entire time period that we have, which is over 100 years worth of data. Let's get that up on our screen. It's 127 years worth of data to be exact. Now, over 127 year period, and that red vertical line, uh, that matches up or that ties into where we're at today. So this suggests that the Dow, seasonally speaking, over 127 years, forms a bottom right about now that takes us into basically the May high out here. That's what that is telling us. That's 127 years. How about something more recent, like the last quarter of a century? The last quarter of a century says that the Dow typically doesn't form its bottom until the early part of March out there. Well, we got the Dow headed higher, not lower. No matter how you and I take a look at that seasonal pattern, uh, it just isn't following along. It's not following along. So, well, at least it's not following along that way, right? We can take that same 100 and. Uh, 27 years worth of data, we can add some different things to it. For example, we can take a look at a presidential election out here. Uh, here is the uh, presidential election years. This shows that we should bottom right about now, rally for a couple of weeks through and through, uh, right, really for the rest of the month, and then move lower into the July time frame. Let's say that that's not what we wanted to look at. Let's say we wanted something else. What would that something else be? Let's get back to 127 years. Um, what if we went and took a look at uh, even years? We've got 2024. So it's, what happens during even years out here? Well, typically we form a bottom right about now over the last 127 years. What if the year is bullish? It's a bullish trending year versus a bearish trending year. Well, here are those bullish trending years. They show that we should form a bottom right about now. So I'd have to say that the analog patterns really aren't uh, taking hold here and something else is going on. No problem. So that means we just simply resort back to patterns and so forth. So when we take a look at the Dow, and this is the, we take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frames. Monthly's on the left, weekly's in the center, daily is on the right. These uh, blue, red, green lines out here are horizontal trading ranges. They're different for each time frame. Sometimes they're the same. What 
they're doing is this uh, tool goes out, takes a look at the actual close for the specific time frame, identifies all those, and then I, what it does is it uh, tries to identify where the largest congregation of opens and closes are. And that establishes that horizontal trading range. Once we have that distance, for example, and I can't guarantee you because I'd have to really go down to the bottom of the chart. But right now you can see at 21 instances at 33.029 on the daily, 26 at 33.930. So that price distance is the exact same price distance added to each of these, either to the upside or the downside. Works the same way on the weekly and the monthly. In the case of the weekly chart, we can see an A to B equals CD pattern coming off of the 2022 lows out here. 2022, not 2020, but just the 2022 lows out here. And price has made the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. The issue is... If you take a look at this, move along the C to D leg, it's way on the left side of that C to D angle. This tells us about a much stronger move than the A to B move. This suggests to you and I that the Dow should take out this 39,290 level and make its way to 41,184. Now, that's the daily time frame chart out there. I'm sorry, the weekly time frame chart. So the weekly time frame chart, that's intermediate. That could be weeks from now where that really starts going. So because we're still up at resistance on the weekly, and by the way, the daily, we're very close to resistance. 39,336 is its horizontal trading range. We didn't get right up to it, but we use these more like Jack Sparrow. We use these as guidelines, not like as rules uh, that are that specific out here. So we know that we're up on the Dow towards resistance levels out here. Um, I'm not going to tell you that the uh, analog has flipped or something like that. No, the analog is just simply irrelevant at this moment in time. But what's not irrelevant are the patterns that you and I pay attention to and that we trade out here. So if, in fact, the Dow is able to get above this 39.340 level, then that should take us up to the 40,000 mark. 40,635 or thereabouts happens to be the uh, monthly horizontal trading range boundary line out there. Now, you may remember we took a look at the daily time frame chart for the Dow. We went through all the indices. A bearish reversal candle confirms a uh, Rhodes Mint indicator top, and I believe a Wave 7 top could actually form today inside of the Dow. So that would suggest we should potentially prepare for some type of pullback. I say potentially because, you know, if we really take a look at what's also going on in the universe, the universe of stock trading, that is, where is my chart? Speaking of the Dow... I think I have the Dow priced in all the major currencies, Dow priced in other currencies. And where are we at today? Well, we have not made a new all-time high in terms of dollars or euros, but we have in terms of yen. We have in terms of Aussie dollars. We have not in terms of Corona. We have in terms of Great British Pound. We have in terms of Swiss franc out there. So we're still up at these new all-time highs in these other currencies. Those folks are buyers, people. And that's what makes this cycle uh, or the set of seasonal cycles potentially somewhat irrelevant. Not the patterns, but the actual analog patterns, at least for the Dow, because we've got global capital that's flowing in here. Not just here. We also have global capital that's flowing into a couple of other countries, like Australia. I actually, the DAX was at new all-time highs on Friday. Uh, probably this morning it was a new all-time high as well. I believe it was trading higher earlier. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I hope that answered all your questions there, Kevin. When we get back to this break, we'll take a look at Berkshire Hathaway, ENVX, Amazon, the Bonds, URA, and a few others. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to some of our requests that have come in. The first one we're taking a look at, this is for a – who sent this in? This is for Jim. Why take a look at Berkshire Hathaway. So what do we know about it? Well, why do we know there's a new profile that is uh, forming? You have support at 400.84. Uh, you've got resistance up at 419.07. Today looks like it will become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Uh, as long as price closes above the close of bar number four, that close was 407.15, you'll get bar number eight. Tomorrow you need to see a close above the close of bar number five, 409.25. If we get that, we'll have a TD9 count top. Price right now is testing the oscillator and change line. If price closes below that today, Berkshire Hathaway will have lost its momentum. It still has a second day to prove that this is really a false loss of momentum move, so to speak. And if price does close below 411.51, that would be the signal. Now, that signal would then say price should get back to test 408.13 or 400.84. If we open up the daily time frame chart for Berkshire Hathaway, what we need to see out here is we need to see a close below the bottom of that profile, 400.84, to suggest that there is a profile change in trend. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, bar number nine will complete this week as long as Berkshire Hathaway closes above the close of bar number five, 390.75. Seems like a likely outcome to me. Monthly chart looks very bullish, although it has taken out a swing point and done it on light volume. The swing point I'm referring to had 129 million shares back in March of 2022. Uh, last week was 73 million shares, and this week's not worth the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, last month, and then this month is uh, 55 million shares. So it is moving higher with lighter volume than that monthly swing point. But I pay attention to the daily and the weekly. Well, if we pay attention to that, what's that telling us, Steve O? Uh, we got to watch whether price holds a support level right now inside of Berkshire Hathaway on a daily time frame. But it does look like to me we're getting it's getting ready to form some type of short or perhaps intermediate term top with price pulling back to the 394 level out there. So, Jim, that's what I see in looking at Berkshire Hathaway. Duncan Steve inside the Tigers then wanted to take a look at ENVX. ENVX hit the buy zone as we uh, talked about. Uh, they did that this morning. That's the buy zone, and this is with inside its bullish structure daily profile and that was between 927 and 960 we got down this morning to a low of 923 uh, you are trading into a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom candle 
Uh, that candle had volume there of 3.9 million shares. You closed in it on Friday with 4.3 million shares. Ideally, so today's volume is so far on ENBX about 1.6 million. Again, that's going into 3.9, but that's still a little bit too much out here volume wise. Um, but you're in the buy zone, certainly with regard to the daily time frame, the weekly time frame, which is at the bottom of his profile, um, not too far below the bottom of the weekly. Uh, the 30-minute time frame chart gave you a buy signal. What does that need to do to confirm what we see on the daily time frame? When I say a buy signal, I'm referring to that Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom that we're taking a look at out here, Duncan. That uh, formed at uh, 10 a.m. this morning. So what we need here, the 30-minute chart says for ENVX, Price must close above 972 in order to suggest that this is gaining some traction with its intent to get up to the 1120 level out there. So I'd watch 972. You got all the makings of a, a bottom, the exception of those makings being a little bit too much volume today compared to the swing point that is trading inside. So, Duncan, thanks so much for the request. Have a magnificent Monday. G-Man wants to take a look at ticker symbol AMZN. We know what that is. That is Amazon. And Amazon is just simply bullish, outright bullish. We take a look at its daily time frame, G-Man. And the reason is price above the green oscillator and change line. Price is above uh, the top of its profile. And if price today can close above 175.39, that's what it needs to do, then it will be an all-out bullish mode. So right now, it does have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And in order to negate that, you need to see that close above 175.39. That swing point had volume of 51 million shares. On Friday, you closed into it with 59 million shares. That said that the top should get tested today. And in fact, that is what has happened. Now, Volume today for Amazon is 16 million shares. We just simply say that's about 50 some odd million shares or so. That swing point has got 56 million shares, 51 million shares. So you're still trading inside that swing point. What you're looking for here, uh, G-Man, is a clear break of that uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. And if you get that, then we can say it's smooth sailing or smoother sailing. Now on a weekly time frame, this is going to trigger, well, this may trigger bar number eight of a TD9 count. The we've got to say may is first of all price has to close above for bar number eight has to close above the close of bar number four that's not too too difficult that's up at 171.81 but then next week price would have to close above bar number five and that closes 174.45 if that's truly what's going to take place here we're not going to see much movement inside of amazon certainly to the downside the monthly chart is uber bullish it's got an a to b equals cd to the upside suggests we get back at least to its all-time highs out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Amazon G-Man. I hope that that uh, information uh, assisted you with your decisions. The next request coming in from CKP inside the Tigers and CK, I got to take a swig. Sorry about that. And uh, he would like to take a look at the 30-year as well as the seasonal. So let's pull open the seasonal here for 30 year. I have no idea what the seasonal pattern is, but we are going to find out, or we're certainly going to try to find out. Should be one of the popular instruments out here. Bonds, bonds, bonds. Where are we? James Bond, where are you? Copper, soybeans, dollar. Huh. Huh. How about that? Let's see if we can pull it up this way. Let's see if we just put in the symbol, if I can get it. ZB, come on, come on. Hmm. Okay. Oh, did it just pop that up there? Son of a gun. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this off screen, and that way, and they periodically try to populate it with something to see if we get that seasonal up there for you. That's very odd. Very odd. Let me try 30. 30 years. Nothing coming up. All right, I'm going to wait for a break on that. So let's take a look at 30 year. Here's what we know. There is a profile that formed on Friday. And price run right up into that resistance level. And really, I've got two different areas. I've got one top of the profile up at 119.22. I've got a second top at 119.03. So that is your resistance zone, CKP. Price must close above that for two consecutive sessions to suggest that there is some type of further move to the upside. I do not see a bottoming pattern as we speak. That does not mean that it hasn't bottomed. It just means I don't have a bottoming pattern. Again, I'm looking at, though, by the way, I'm looking at the June contract. That is now the, uh, we've rolled over into uh, June, so I would be paying attention to uh, that. So right now, you've got price consolidating with inside its daily profile that runs from the 117 
I'd say 117.21 to 118 level. That's your buy zone and resists up at 119.22. I don't have any. I don't have enough data here on the uh, weekly time frame for that. What I'd have to do, and I'll do it. I'll just go. Uh, put in the continuous contract and just grab some data and see what kind of signals we have on the weekly and the uh, monthly uh, charts for you. Again, we're taking a look at the 30-year treasury. So on the weekly chart, price right now is testing that oscillator and change line. If we were to close below that, that would suggest we pull back even further. And on the 30-year price, on the 30-year, on the monthly, the 30-year is also testing profile, su uh, not profile support, but it's oscillator and change line support out there. So that's cool that it's at support, but on a 30-minute basis, what's it doing? 30-minute basis says you have a Rhodesman indicator top and price should go target the 118.11 area. That's its CD9 count breakout level for 30 minutes. CKP, I hope that that review helped you out. Uh, if I can get the uh, if I can get the uh, seasonal up, I will. If not, I'll just have to work on figuring that out. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The only thing I was able to pull up during the break were the uh, seasonal charts for the TLT, which has got 21 years at red vertical line, tells us where we're at right now. We're really not in a favorable time period uh, for the uh, 30 year. That favorable time period typically starts. This is over a 21 year period for the TLT right around the early part of May out there. Our next request was a take look at URA. That's for LB. He's looking for current buy levels. Uh, that current buy level is really still the uh, same out here. What is price doing as it gets into this swing point? It has not tested 
tested that low. The low I'm referring to on a daily time frame, price is trading into, it's rejecting it right now, is rejecting it with lighter volume. Well, that swing point has volume of 1.6 million shares. On Friday, you moved into it with 5 million shares. Today, so far, you're at 2.4. So that's not a that's not a test and rejection on light volume. I would say, when I take a look at the daily time frame chart, the buy point may be around 26.15. It's TD nine count breakout level. On a weekly chart, price closed below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile last week. Uh, that was at the uh, the low of that is at 27.55. Uh, we're trading still below that right now. You've got a monthly TD nine count top out here. So this is suggesting a bit lower price out here. So uh, um, LB, we've got to come back to this, but it won't be tomorrow, I don't think. I think it is as uh, price starts to get down to that 26.15. But I don't see the buy signal or anything along those lines as we speak today. Uh, we want to take a look at, uh, for Vic, want to take a look at Mattel. MAT is a ticker symbol out here. Mattel forming a daily TD nine count top a few days ago. Price should pull back to the 1925 level. That's supported by the weekly chart where price ran out of energy at the top of its profile out there. And the same can be said about the monthly time frame. So Mattel should pull back to that 1925 level. Price closed below that 1892 and below so that would be 1841. PPLT, as we take that up, this for Dan in New York City. PPLT right now is pulling back into its bullish structure profile zone, the buy zone, between 80.53 and about 80.95. The actual number is 80.97 out there. Do I have a bottom pattern? Not really that I see out here on the daily time frame, nor do I have that on the weekly, nor do I have that on the monthly. The weekly chart says be careful because it's trading below profile out here. Um, Let's do this here, Dan, because we're out of time. I will come back and we'll take a look at Platinum as well as PPLT. And for Dan, we'll take a look at Blank, BLNK, tomorrow as well. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Have a magnificent, marvelous Monday. I'll see you back here on Terrific Tuesday. Take care.